Hello fellow supermoms, Nadine hier. Summertime, finally. I was really ready for it, I don't know about you. And we still don't know if we're going on a trip or not, but it doesn't matter. You know, whether you're staying at home or are going on a trip, uh, there are four summer rules, summer tips, we have always used to make sure everybody can recharge and relax and have fun during the summer break. So I want to share uh, these tips with you. And I will share if you're lacking ideas because you don't know what to do with your kids because they're not on a summer camp or anything. So you have them at home for like two months or you know six months, uh, six weeks, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, I have a ton of fun ideas for you. So we have a one boy with autism and ADHD and a sweet girl, but you've not tried this. By the time it's summer, they are both done, done. So uh, one boy, you know, although he's, you know, done with, you know, performing and, and trying his best all, all, all year, he does have a hard time transitioning. Uh, so we make sure uh, there's not a lot of pressure and kids have their, uh, their space to really recharge. And that really brings me to rule number one, our, yeah, that we have in our household. I see a lot of uh, uh, parents talk about having summer to-do lists and summer achievement lists. So uh, the kids have to read so many books or if a kid is behind, oh, they're gone, you know, that summer holiday we're really going to use to make sure they're up to speed. So can you imagine being a special needs child? And it was a hard year. Whether you had a, a chronic disease and were sick a lot, or you know, it just costs a lot of energy because of dyslexia, autism, ADHD, doesn't mind. So you, you've been working really hard, trying really hard all year long. And your reward is a learning camp, having to read five books. So you're, you know, just as good as other uh, kids uh, in the class. You know, I talked about this in a prior pod podcast. Not every kid is an a, a grade A kid. And that's totally fine. I really do believe that, you know, if your kid tried uh, really hard, you really have to, you know, uh, allow them a break. So for us, summer is really all about recharging. So no, they didn't have a mandatory uh, book list or, you know, having to follow a sp special education class. They were allowed to recharge, really <sighs> lay in bed still, well, when they're young, <laughs> they were up at 5 a.m. anyway, but you know, they were allowed to, to watch their favorite cartoon three times in a row. Uh, when they got older, sleep in a little bit. So our first you know, rule in the house really is to let go. Let go of all those to-dos. You know, whether or not they got great, uh, great you know if they tried and if they struggled they they are entitled to have some fun and just downtime as well uh, and it really helped our kids they actually did better uh, when they were allowed to just chill and relax uh, for a while having said that you know that we don't have to-do lists or chores or you have to read so many books or whatever uh, especially with kids with autism, uh, it can really help to have like a summer menu, you know, kind of a schedule uh, and a plan, uh, so to say. Uh, because Wonderboy, when he started to get older, you know, he became a teen and older, so he would e easily, if he would be able, <laughs> sleep till, I don't know, 10 or 11, and nowadays, <laughs> because he's, he's 18, uh, 
if he gets a chance, he will sleep, sleep till noon. But with that, he's like, okay, so where's breakfast? Well, breakfast was at 8 a.m. in the morning. But in his mind, it's not linked to a time. You have three meals in a day. So regardless of time. So a time schedule can really help if you have, especially a kid on the spectrum. Uh, but what also can help uh, and make it more fun, you know, you can engage, make like a summer plan. And on that plan, you know, uh, we always said to each other, whether we were going on a trip or stayed at home, uh, you know, and most of us stayed at home in the last two years, I think. Uh, on that list, everybody was uh, uh, first throwing ideas. Okay, where do you really want to go? Like a theme park or what activity or worship would you like to do? Uh, or what general thing would you would you, would you love to do with your parents or your, with your friends? And we would write them all down. And, well, we don't really have theme park kids, but of course, especially when money comes in, they were allowed to, to select one, you know, one activity, for instance, that an uh, outdoor where we had to pay like a theme park. And then they uh, were allowed to come up with one fun idea to do around the house. Uh, things like that. The third summer tip recharge time uh, especially when you're going on a trip but also at home you know we mixed going somewhere and staying at home and just do nothing watch tiktoks netflix read a book you know my kids are not really <laughs> into reading books audio books perhaps but uh, i was really a book nerd so i would read so much during the summer uh, but with recharge time, I mean, really mean, you know, we didn't plan a tight schedule from every day and an activity for every day. Kids are allowed to get bored, you know, and have downtime by themselves. You as well, by the way. So um, if you have your systems in place and we had something like, you know, uh, recharge time and at, I can't remember what the time was, two o'clock or four o'clock. Uh, we had like half an hour and everybody uh, had like a downtime activity by themselves. And they were not allowed to do serve someone else. And by that way, you know, you as a mom can recharge as well. Number four, you know, that's kind of, if you have teens in the house, I think, and everybody is, there are so many clubs and, and everybody's going somewhere. Uh, make sure you at least sit down and have breakfast together or lunch or dinner or, you know, a snack together. Uh, and I think this is really important if, uh, you know, you have one parent that is still working and comes home in the evening. If you have teens or everybody has a gazillion activities that you at least have one moment in the day that you share stories and tell each other, you know, what went well, what was fun, things like that, so that you stay connected. Uh, yeah, so it really helps. So first of all, we let go of all the to-dos. No, our kids didn't have to go read so many extra books because it would be better for their dyslexia. They were so tired. They were allowed to pick out a fun book or read a gazillion comics. That's still reading, uh, but we didn't put them on mandatory camps so they would get up to level. They were allowed downtime. They were allowed to recharge. And even when they only got C's or anything, you know, if they tried and struggled, you shouldn't be punished by more school. You know, that kid needs a break as well. Number two, you know, uh, although we encourage letting go of to-do lists, a summer plan can really come in handy uh, uh, to create structure, especially for kids uh, on the spectrum, really helpful. 
recharge time. So one day you have an activity outside the house, the other day you have downtime. Or each and every day have a half hour, for instance, that everybody has to be and recharge by themselves. Yes, even your four-year-old. They can watch Let It Go or whatever Disney movie or uh, watch something on Netflix. Stay in a room, but everybody should be by themselves and relax. And that way you as a mom get some downtime in as well. And uh, number four, I would say for kids, but also if you have younger kids, but everybody has activities all day long, you know, make sure you at least share one meal together where you sit, sit and talk, not in front of the TV, but you sit and talk and just talk about your day and connect with your family members. So that are really our rules, are the summer tips we live by, uh, and that really helped uh, Wonder Boy to transition into the summer because the first week he would be so sad and he had a real time struggling because, you know, summer, but even a winter break means saying goodbye to people and, you know, a new chapter, which can be quite scary. So that first week he really needed to recharge. So we didn't have anything planned and he could do whatever he wants. There was, was of course, kind of a schedule, but it really helped. Having said that, what to do with your time, especially when they're young. I mean, in the Netherlands, uh, we have a six week summer holiday, but when we lived in the States, we had about a good two months and our kids didn't go to summer camps for three or four weeks. I think nowadays there's a possibility in the Netherlands, especially if you're into uh, boy uh, or girl scouts, uh, but for the rest, still not, being away for a couple of weeks doesn't really exist, that opportunity in the Netherlands. So some summer fun ideas to do with your kids. And this really, I think, can be fun with almost every age. Uh, first, build a tent in your living room. You know, use your table, build a huge tent, uh, sleep in it together. Uh, and if you have teenagers, why not one evening? Have all the mattresses downstairs in front of the telly and, and have a big TV movie sleep sleepover together in the living room. Uh, our, my kids love this, love this. Design and build a tree or a cardboard house with your uh, kids. Hey, you know, your team probably doesn't want to do this anymore when they're a little bit older. Uh, and if you don't have a, a tree in your uh, backyard, building a fort with boxes you can get at a supermarket or a hardware store, it can be hilarious. And then you can decorate them and like it, you can even have a sleep over there. It can be a lot of fun. Well, something for every age. A campfire, of course, with s'mores. Making a gingerbread house. Summer style. I, I mean, why wait till December to <laughs> make a cookie house? And uh, it's a great early project. Um, we had it one year that we just only used yellow and orange candy or something to decorate our house. It was really fun. Uh, and you know, this is just as fun when your kid is 14 or 16. If you lived, if you're in America or visited, you probably know about Build-A-Bear. Well, you can go to, you know, a place where they have that possibility, or you let your kid design their own cuddly toy, their own stuffed animal. And, you know, uh, take them to a craft or a, a fabric store and let them make their own stuffed animal. And, you know, one of those, um, yeah, how do you say it? If you're listening by YouTube, you can see my hand making a movement. <laughs> One of those dolls that you put your hand in and you're pretending that you're, you know, that the doll's talking by himself. My 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 super girl did it once after watching a, I think a girl on American Idols or something. Uh, 
yeah, Pinterest is great for ideas. You know, let your kids uh, make their own Jedi or, you know, uh, even create their own costume or lightsaber. It's a lot of fun to, to, to do this activity. <laughs> you can, well, if you're watching YouTube, you can see me <laughs> going through my papers because I was going to make a short uh, podcast, but really I just talk too much and I've got too many ideas. So another great activity, a spa day at home, whether your kid is a boy or a girl, you know, most of them love to paint fingernails. Uh, and yours, by the way, you know, make masks, have cucumbers in the house and, and make eye masks. And uh, a teenage version, get a twin massage. Really, it, it can be a great activity to do. And even for boys, because it can be so relaxing. And if your kid is still full of tension because of the transition, a massage can really help. Uh, have a freestyle Lego party. Just get all the Legos out in the living room on a big carpet. You know, let the Legos be there for a week. Who cares? And you know, build echo castles, make a story, make little video clips of it. Uh, and you, if you know, if you're not really into building stuff, you can even play creationary. It's like Pictionary, but with Legos. You know, everybody can build a little thing within 30 seconds and the other people have to guess what it is. Or crafts or science kits. You know, a kid version for your kids and an adult version for yourself. I can't wait to order my summer craft projects started with wreck a journal which i loved and since i now have a bob ross activity book things like that out of the out of the box are really really a lot of fun and it's actually because it's an out of the box id it stimulates the brain uh, you know if your kid is a goal getter or you are a goal getter yes go ahead do a challenge or create a challenge uh, you know, a, a plank challenge or a seven minute challenge. Uh, if your kid is trying to build stamina or, you know, a physical condition, start with rollerblading every day for five, even if it's just for one minute or five minutes and just count all those minutes up and see how many minutes you did in the end, you know, uh, and you can even have a reading challenge if your kids are really into reading, you know, but make a reward chart. If you want your kids to read because they're really struggling, uh, you know, make a reward chart for them to at least have a little bit of fun. Um, other great tips. Well, a movie marathon with lots of popcorn and pizza and ice cream, of course. Uh, a great combo if you you know you have your indoor tent or your uh sleepover with your kids in the living room uh it's always great it's always great to do and you can make it you can even throw a team on it superheroes vikings lego well i wouldn't recommend sleep on lego blocks but you know have a fun team create the food around it and the movies that it's all alike. Why not? Go out for high tea or make your own high tea. And if you would love to travel to another country, but you can't, you know, create, bring the experience home. You know, declare French Day and only have French food. Declare ja uh, Japan Day or Viking Day or anything, you know. Uh, and with that, on French Day, you have a baguette and, and cheeses. On, uh, uh, you can have Hawaiian sushi if you have summer tropical island theme parties. Create Viking jewelry. Uh, again, you know, go on Pinterest. There are so many ideas that you can use for this. And uh, if you have a history team, a great tip. There's a YouTube channel called Map Men. So M A P men, uh, it, it's it's brilliant if you're into history and, and and yeah, great. And it's like three minutes video videos. Uh, tips from my Wonder Boy and Supergirl old-fashioned board games. 
the Nintendo Wii, old style, uh, especially the Wii Fit. You know, all those games in the tropical island, the, uh, Wii Island, a lot of fun to do with your kids, even when they're 16. Go rollerblading together. You know, I just heard, I always thought, oh, it's so bad. In the Netherlands, we don't have roller, you know, holes where you can rollerblade. And you, but I just found out from my cousin, they actually have one like 45 minutes away. A rollerblade park. Uh, American style, like you saw in Stranger Things, that you know, you have the music and you can just have this big field where you can just go in circles. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to do that this summer. If you're looking for more inspiration, look for episode 14 and 15. They're not on YouTube yet, uh, because they were the ones without, uh, you know, video. Uh, but you can find them on any uh, great uh, podcast uh, platform like Apple and Stitcher and, 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 and Google and what, what more is there? Uh, well, anyway, it's out there. You know, go to your favorite podcast platform and look for episodes 14 and 15. And uh, episode 14 was more about uh, how to keep sane. And not become your kid's personal entertainment uh, planner. And how everybody can have quality uh, time, including you as a mom. And in episode 15, I share, kind of like this episode, a ton of ideas to do. Uh, and uh, make summer a great fun adventure, even if you're staying at home. And if you have a cool staycation tip, please share. Uh, you know, join the special needs super moms. Uh, private Facebook group and uh, share your tips. It's a group just for moms and there are three questions you have to answer because I really want to make sure this is a safe community. Uh, so you do have to be a specialist mom. Uh, and yeah, you have to, I think there's one fun question. What's your favorite chill drink or uh, food? And the last question is, I think, well, you have to follow the, the, the rules, you know, so there's no, this is not a place for politics or a conspiracy theories or whether you are agree with science and, and, and vaccinations, anything like that at all. This is a safe place to talk about, you know, uh, problems you're facing as a specialist mom, but also tips to share if you are a little bit for the downline, uh, it can really help. Uh, we had one mom that struggled with food, for instance, and the kid was a really picky eater. And ki the, the parents, the moms with, you know, their and their kids are, you know, young adults already, and who have been through that. Those are the ones that you really want to take from, and not <laughs> the streetwise tips you get from family that are like, you just have to be more strict, and you're like, that's not really the problem. So, Feel free to join if you're looking for a tribe of fellow super moms to hang out. Go to Facebook and look for the Special Needs Super Moms uh, Facebook group. I don't know if you hear that ding as well, but <laughs> it means my, my phone is connected to my computer. I don't know why I ever did that, because now if something goes off on my phone, <laughs> my computer goes bling. Which is really annoying and distracting uh, if you have ADHD. So, I hope you have a lovely summer. I will probably uh, repost episodes 14 and 15 so you can um, uh, find them again for this summer. I hope you have a lovely summer. Uh, and if you have a great idea for a podcast, please find me. You, need, you can find me. On Instagram, especially Superman Podcast. On Facebook, the same. Uh, on YouTube, of course. Uh, and uh, just reach out if you have a great idea, or you're like, I would really love to for you to to give tips on a certain subject. Reach out. I would love to dive into that and see if we can help you with that. And if you are looking to find a way to get out of overwhelm and uh, conquer time and stop the endless to-do lists and go from endless to-do list to ta-da, <laughs> ta-da list at the end of the day, 
and created time for yourself. Uh, I can highly recommend uh, the Special Needs Supermom Planner. You can find it on Etsy. Uh, and I will probably soon will do a short course in a private Facebook group. So come join and uh, have a great summer. Bye.